Welcome everybody to TV3 and the Spartan Sports Report. Sam and I are happy to have Brent Duncan with us, who is the Director of Athletics at CHS, and Brent has all the news that is fit to tell. I'll answer whatever I can answer for you guys. <laughs> you got a question for him, Sam? <laughs> well, we'll have one for tonight, though, <laughs> or more. <laughs> any changes in anything? For yeah, this we week, lost, uh, let's go a week at a time. No, this week we're still, well, there's no wrestling tomorrow night because both the teams we're supposed to wrestle is uh, quarantined out. So we don't have a wrestling match tomorrow night, which we were supposed to open at home tomorrow. So. That's right. The kids were anxious. And I couldn't too. find an opponent that wanted to come and wrestle us. So we're out for this week in wrestling. So we just picked up a wrestling tournament at Southwestern Hanover on Saturday, December the 5th but to add to the schedule. So, so I'm sure the kids, the code. Coaches and the kids are disappointed because they. Yeah, I think they're ready to get on the mat. Mm -hmm. They're just ready to need to get out and get some wrestling going. So, you know, we're supposed to open up this Tuesday night, and unfortunately, both Union County and Knightstown don't have enough practices. Kind of like us with our boys basketball. Yes. Union County don't have enough practices in yet. So, we'll get rolling as soon as we can get a team that's got enough practices, <laughs> or find somebody that wants to come and play us. So. When will Union County have their situation taken care of? You have any idea? Uh, I think they're going to start the first of December. So. Okay. Uh, I think they've postponed through December 1 already. So, and of course, the basketball game with Union County is... Rescheduled for December 23rd. So. Yes, yes. So little Christmas night <laughs> bonanza instead of Thanksgiving night. So. Well, that's unfortunate for, uh, for the Knightstown team. And I know they had to scrap the scrimmage with the Spartans basketball on Saturday. Yeah, I, they got kind of, sh like we did, kind of got shut down by their health department. So they voted last Tuesday whether they were going to have winter sports or not. And, uh, thankfully, it got voted through that they could continue on to have winter sports. If they were going to go to e-learning, there was a question whether they would even continue with sports. So, thankfully, it, for Matt's purpose and Matt's sake, it got in all the kids that it was okay to go ahead and continue to play, even if they have to go to all e-learning. So, everything continues to be uncertain. Every day, every minute. <laughs> so, we're just one phone call away from. <laughs> Being yeah. in the same boat as many other schools have been. Those numbers in. come out every week, right? So every Wednesday, so, so it could change. You know, as tomorrow we're getting ready for the next girls' game and makeup game, which was supposed to be on the road with Mount Vernon, but is now at home tomorrow night. We're still under the voucher system, so we're selling, having the all sport ticket holders opportunities today to come and get vouchers till six, and then they can come in tomorrow as well until three to get vouchers, and then if we have any left over, we'll put them at the gate like we did. Saturday night, but come Wednesday, that's all going to change again, depending on what happens to the caller. If we stay orange, it'll be the same for the next area. If we stay go to red, then it's just two yes. tickets per participants, and there is no vouchers at the gate or all sport ticket holder. So that's tough for you with uh, holiday week here. If uh, Wednesday you have to change things up, um, Thursday's Thanksgiving, Friday's a day off. Uh, well, I told you. To I'm going to give the coaches of the band and the choir, or band, cheerleaders, Spartanettes, and girls basketball team the two vouchers. In case we go to red, they'll have what they need in their hand. If we go to orange, they'll have two, and then we can put the rest of them up at the ticket window on Saturday. So, What happens, uh, what's the, the level above orange, yellow? Yellow. What happens with yellow? 50% uh, capacity in the bowl, so, but... Since we're done selling all sport tickets for the year, all of my all sport ticket holders can get in if they want to get in at 25% or even at 50%. There's enough space to accommodate them. So that way those who've already paid for their all sport tickets have an opportunity to get in the game. And we had to shut them off because you didn't want your all sport ticket numbers to get over their capacity at 25%. Then you have to turn people away that have an all sport ticket in your hand. And that's not a good situation. We've had to do that too many times with the restricted limit of number of people we can have in. So when it was just essential people only or just by vouchers at football, then it gets a little harder for those that we were anticipating having open level five completely open, you know, by or stage five by July, and now we're still kind of stuck in the middle of where we're at. So, but the kids are playing, and that's the mm -hmm. important part. Mm -hmm. So, as of uh, now, as long as Fayette County stays in the present stage, you're permitted 25% capacity, which is what, 1250? Yeah, we got it capped at 1,300, so okay. no more than that. There's enough space. And you notice we taped off the first three rows for purposes to keep people away as far as we can from the kids and the players and the staff that's working. So uh, we tried to keep them safe and 
hopefully everybody else masked up like they were asked to do. And I looked around, and I'd say the majority of them did have their mask on yes. while they're inside, and that's what we ask, and that's what we really want. So and this uh, is not your decision, is it? It's, it's well, that's what we're that's what we're governed by. You know, the governor and the board of health approves what we need yes. to do, and they were, we were asked to have people wear a mask inside, and that's what we expect everybody to do. Hopefully we'll abide by those rules. So. Spartans are supposed to go to Delta on Saturday for basketball, boys basketball. What's the ticket situation there? Uh, the tickets are being it out. We get a grand total of 50. <laughs> so Coach Brown has those tickets in his hands, and <laughs> there are 20 players on the team and about seven coaches, and so time each of them take well, two. Multiply that by two. We may not have enough to cover two for everybody <laughs> at 50, so. Uh, I'm sure yes. they'll get the kids' parents in as much as one, and, and, and obviously not every kid's parent is going to go because that does happen. Uh, yes. We would like for them to go, so they'll use those tickets amongst the players to get, make sure we can get people in. It's so. tough when some kids might have two sets of parents. It, uh, that yeah, but that that's, it kind of puts the kid in the middle. Yeah, it does. So, <laughs> and I feel for the kid. Right. So yeah. you know, do you give one to one set of parent and one to the other one, or you give two to this one this time and two to that one next time? And you know, it's a hard situation to put kids in. You know, and it's unfortunate for everybody. But uh, schools don't like it any better, and I think no. the kids have been pretty adaptive to it and receptive. It's, they don't like it, but I think they're pretty resilient. So. Uh, as long as adults can handle not being in there, I think our kids will suffice. You kids, know, I know. kids are probably more resilient than the adults. Oh, by far. And, yeah. you know, as we had some questions about why the girls' game was open to 25% on Saturday, but we restricted the boys' scrimmage to the essential personnel only. And basically the answer is, you know, the girls are already started their season. Not that we want to have them to get ill, but the boys hadn't had a chance to start their season for us or Hamilton Heights, and both of us were in agreement that we didn't want to bring people in have to push the season back any further than it already was so mm -hmm. that's why we decided to keep it as essential people only so and it's just a scrimmage it's good right. for the coaches to have the time to coach their kids and not everybody be scrutinizing in the bleachers or whatever at the time so that'll take place does that happen that'll take place november 28th when the boys open up at delta and it took place last saturday when the girls opened up so friday night at centerville i should say so but you know it's just one of those things try to be as safe as you can but you also want people to come in and see the games and being a scrimmage, it wasn't necessarily sure. important to have fans in there on the scrimmage day. I'd like for you to talk about the girls' the weekend. They went to Centerville and were home Saturday night. Two ball games, sort of alike in a way. I mean, as far as the game, first quarters were close, but after that, the winning team sort of took charge. And well, the good thing, on Friday, we were on the winning side of that. That's right. That's so. what <laughs> there was uh -huh. a big difference. Definitely right? a difference in the way the style of game was played as well. Yes. And, uh, uh, I think we've seen some improvement. It's hard to really gauge because you, know, you can't, I won't say that this will sound like, you get better as a basketball player during the season, but you get really better in the off season. And in the season, you're honing what you've learned in the off season. And unfortunately for our girls, they haven't had two off seasons because of a late hire two years ago. And Yes. All right. So it should say a second hire that was late two years ago. And then the pandemic this summer has put our girls program just a little bit behind with some summer workouts working on your skills. So I know Coach Harder did a good job on the time she had. When, and you can see the improvement, you know, the man to man and the talking and the communication on the floor. But the difference in speed and difference in quickness and different of playing ability by yes. our opponents on the two nights were about 100 miles apart. So, <laughs> uh, but I saw some good things out there. So. I thought so, but uh, Anderson is blessed with an excellent player. Yeah, it's I know her tire, first name is Tyra. I don't Tyra know Ford. Ford. But I know uh, the AD. points. Yeah, the AD said she had 1,501, I think, going into the night last night, and she's only 100 and some away from the all time scoring record in Anderson that. High School. So for the girls. Yes, yes. I don't think she, he doesn't think she'll he'll catch Kojak Fuller, but she could be close if she can continue to average 30 some points a game. Uh, I know she got 49 against Richmond. And, out of their 62. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, thought, uh, I thought we contained her pretty well. I mean, it forced them to. Well, she only got 23, so right. that was probably her low <laughs> for the year so far. So, right. I thought we did a good job. I had a little Ruble we'll Gold guarded her for a while. And, mm -hmm. you know, our girls play hard. We're not blessed with a lot of foot speed, if you've watched us play. So, at least lateral movement. We might be able to get down the floor straight, but that lateral movement is where you got to be able to move on defense. And so, but we did some good things. I she struggled. Girls, she earned the points she got. She just didn't get them right. freely. I think so. our girls are seeing the floor better. Um, some of their passes is, 
a lot better. Um, sometimes they were turning them over on some of those quick passes, but on the other hand, they were seeing they were seeing that that cutter going to the basket or whatever. So well, we had some early opportunities where we broke the press and we didn't finish it and put the ball in the basket, and then maybe they get out of the press a little bit quicker if you make those buckets where you're beating them all the time. But uh, I think the idea is there in the right places. There, mm -hmm. it's just now getting. Sometimes I still think not just with the girls, but with the boys, they throw it to where they're at and not to where they're going to be. Mm -hmm. And then it's behind them a little bit, and then it's just off the tad. So Friday night we were able to press, and I hadn't seen our girls press in, in I don't know how long. And, and of course, different, different uh, opponent, but that was good to see that they could do that. Uh, I think you're getting a different style, you know, mm -hmm. from Larry to Michael and now to Michelle. Mm -hmm. Those are different styles. So we'll see what is in store as we continue out through the year. So. I thought the Anderson game has showed that they had played previously Anderson. They they had several games under their belt where it was. Yeah, our we were second. game number five, I believe, yes. for them, if I remember yes. correctly. And they played some pretty good quality teams in the yeah, first. They were first four it. like <laughs> might be a little harder than our first three or four. So yeah, they had Fishers, yeah. I think, among their Fishers, Pike Lawrence North, Pike, and Richmond. Richmond, Richmond. Richmond. and Richmond was their only win. Yes. Out of those four coming so, in. So Lawrence North's number one in the state in girls that's, basketball. That's going to say it makes you think what the teams they lost to are. Their best I mean, scorer got 37 against the best team in the state. So I figured we held them to 23. That's pretty <laughs> darn good. When you look at so. uh, Anderson's schedule, um, Newcastle and Connorsville are the only non-4A teams on their yes. schedule. So they, with the North Central Conference and, uh, yes, and they being part of the donut around Indianapolis, they do play a tough schedule. Yeah. Yes, they do. So. And uh, I was impressed with the, with the girls from from Anderson and as ours, I mean, I thought they played well for their second game of the season. Yeah, we did. I they, thought we, there's some market improvements out there. I think so. Uh, we oh. were at the ball game, TV3, and we, we have a clip of some of the action. Let's uh, watch that right now. Anderson and Connersville. Ooh, that's a low view. Well, good camera work there. That'd be nice to see a lot of people. I don't know if we're on, but it'd be nice to see a lot of people in the stands. But Would be, but... For the girls' sake. And, Hopefully for the boys' sure. for sake soon. Just so to have mean, that atmosphere. It means a lot. Uh, the kids feed off the fans, don't they? I mean, don't they get well, I think certain kids do. I'm not sure everybody hears okay. the fans, but I think some of them do. <laughs> they, at least they can feel the energy. They may not actually feel and hear them, but they can feel that energy and yes, the excitement so. in the stadium. Yeah, the players have told me that the fans help a lot. Well, we've seen more girls so far, you know, take the ball to the basket and then we have been doing an attack in the rim and we're mm -hmm. just not standing out shooting three-pointers. Yes. And we only played bad poorly in the first half for about a two to three minute stretch and it was just a bad two to three minute stretch and the score kind of got out right. of hand. They, they yeah, I think, in fact, we led 14 to 13 and then, You're right. and, uh, then they went on a, a big run after that. Yes. Yeah. And then when you have a one a little bit, it, that causes your confidence to go just a little bit away. Mm -hmm. So, I really uh, hated missing those first games, but on the other hand, opening up against Centerville maybe is a, a good thing at this point that uh, to show that they could play. The um, and I think they Centerville played four games or three or four games coming in, and and uh, we were. Well, here's a nice deal by. Bailey Taylor, Snyder, in. yes. But um, in fact, my point was that uh, it showed in the first quarter at Centerville that we hadn't played, I thought, but uh, we settled down after that and, and uh, did pretty well. Yes, there were early season or first game mistakes that, that are correctable. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit to get those jitters out once you've started, so a couple games under your belt will help all those things. Uh, so. Tuesday night at Spartan Bowl is. Connorsville, the visiting team or the home team? We'll be the home team on the board. Okay, well, I wonder because it was a Mar <laughs> It was a at Mount Well, Vernon we tried game. to get it there, but we just couldn't find a date that was open on their schedule common to both of us mm -hmm. to go to their place. So he said, hey, we can come to your place next Tuesday if you're open. I said, okay, let me find some officials and we'll get it done. So <laughs> once I got officials, he said, we'll be there. So yeah, you could you could handle a few more of those, couldn't you? I mean, if they, I think for some of them, if we didn't ever have to travel, they would be happy, I think. <laughs> You go back to the old days of Sam Alford at Newcastle. I think the only home games they played was the conference bonus that they had to play on the road. Well, Coach Mulvey <laughs> had that. Everything else was at home. So. 
Coach Malby did that here for a while as well. <laughs> just just the uh, conference games that where you had to play. You can find those people because you got to juggle so many schedules mm -hmm. all year long every year to get that accomplished. So <laughs> if you know how to do that. Well, it depends on the quality of people you want to bring in, too, sometimes. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's true. I'm sure we can find somebody. I know North Davies wants to come and play us, and that's a little hall down there. That's a long way. They got a pretty good underclassman, and if you know, Dow Remples from the Rushville's coaching, and he would like for their kids to play in the bowl. And the experience. Next year, so. Experience the grand Palace. But I think they got a good junior class, so he's not coming <laughs> with no weapons, so. We haven't worked that deal out yet, but if we have a spot maybe in a year or so, we would try to do it for a year or something, just get them up there. So. Well, Spartan fans are happy with the schedule, so you do a good job and just keep up well, the I good work. I think our people are, that like basketball want to see a good basketball game. They don't want to see a stomp or a bad game. Now, I'm not saying every game, but they don't want you to smash everybody. At least I wouldn't think you want to beat everybody well, by 30 because it's not going to help you I don't think your coaches run. would agree to uh, that. No, neither one of them would. No, Boys because... Girls, so. uh, doesn't prepare us. I think, I think we've run through that gamut where we killed everybody and then just couldn't get ourselves right, through the played. second round. Yes, so. yes. And you got to have some competition along the way to know what it's like to get down the tournament trail. So Coach they all get their say so and who they want to schedule, and if we can work it out, we'll, uh, well, I know we'll Coach Brown's theory is the season's just the practice for the tournament. So summers where you learn how to play, seasons where you show what you got, and the tournaments when you're ready to right. get in the game. So. That sounds like an old coach. It just takes a little while to get there sometimes. So. Let's talk about the area of boys basketball season open dates for, for basketball because it, that is this week. This is the week they open. Centerville uh, Wednesday, home with Eastern Hancock. They're home Saturday with Seton Catholic. Rushville is opening Wednesday with Shelbyville at home. Franklin County goes to South Dearborn Saturday to open their season. And it's... Uh, Union County in December the 4th at Knightstown, so there are some, some teams not until next week. Richmond here on December 4th with Shenandoah. Cambridge City this Wednesday at home with Westdale, home Saturday with Union City. Here's the record of every girl teams. We haven't brought you up to date on that. Cambridge City is one and two. They, their win was over Anderson Prep. They lost to Muncie Burris and to Shenandoah. Their next game Tuesday with Centerville. Centerville is 0 and 5. The Bulldog, Lady Bulldogs losses to Randolph Southern, Eastern Hancock, Franklin County, Muncie Burst, and of course the Lady Spartans. Their next game is Tuesday at Cambridge City. Franklin County is 2 and 3 with wins over Olenburg and Centerville. Losses to East Central, Waldron, and Switzerland County. Next game home Saturday with Lawrenceburg. Union County is 1-0. They won 63-35 to over Milan for their one win. Their next game will be home Saturday with Randolph Southern, I guess, if the virus problem is resolved. But Richmond is 2-2. Two two. They lost to Anderson in East Central. Wins over Greenfield and Logansport. Their next game is Monday at Newcastle. Saturday home with Muncie Central. Rushville is 2-1, and one, wins over South Dearborn and Beach Grove. They lost to Mount Vernon. Next game Tuesday at New Palestine. Home Wednesday with Jennings County. And we'll talk about the football championships in a minute. I was wondering if you're going to be busy on Friday and Saturday at Lucas Oil. I will Oil. be busy Friday and Saturday at Lucas Oil. And Rudy Brandsetter will be there at least one of those days. And okay, handing out medals. Handing out medals or helping us with the medals. And Maybe reading the whole Mental Attitude Award. At least he won't be. I might be. Well, that's great for Rudy uh, so, and great for you. I mean, a great yeah, experience. Yeah, a good experience finally for our kids to get in one of those big venues for all, sure. all 18 of those student Excellent. advisory committee kids. So and That's all because he's a member of? The student advisory committee for the IHSA. There's 18 kids in the state, so they're all supposed to work this weekend. It's quite so. an honor for a It'd be a good experience to get them around person. and be inside Lucas Oil and and we'll see how much we get to see of it, given the circumstances <laughs> yeah, we're in. But, uh, you know, down on the field, just being down on the field, it's pretty, pretty cool situation. I've never think. been on, you don't realize how big it is until you're it, standing there. It's amazing. There when last year when we went there to do that game, yeah. it, was, uh, it was quite a good experience for us old folks as well. <laughs> yeah, and I think our kids got it. Even though we didn't win, I think it's a good ex it was a good trip for our kids to get the chance to play in there and see what it's like. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've always tried to find those opportunities if we can and can afford it, so mm -hmm. that's where we're at, so. 
Should be a great weekend. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, the pairings. Uh, Friday at 11 o'clock will be the Class 2A, and that's Fort Wayne Bishop Lures, 8 and 6 against Western Moon, 10 and 4. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Friday, Class 4A, Obert, 11 and 2 versus Indianapolis Ron Kelly, 12 and run. At 7 o'clock, it will be Class 6A, Westfield, 12 and 0 versus Center Grove, 13 and 0. What do you expect there? <laughs> Packed house for as many that can be in there with those two teams. Uh, you notice there's a lot of donut area schools in that final 12 teams, so should be a lot of good crowds. Um, How are they handling the crowd at Lucas Oil? Well, I don't know the maximum. At one time it was 12,500, maybe 15,000 per game, but uh, if you're in the first game, you're either going to, but one team's going to come in the north end and one would come in the south. You sit in the north end, you sit in the south end, or however do it, and then the next game comes in the east and the west. And they're going to clean it out after each game and clean the areas that are not being set in. For the second game, we'll clean the first game's areas while that's going on. Then the third game will be on the north and south again, and they'll start all over <laughs> the next day. So we'll see. It'll be different. A lot of hoops so to jump Everybody through. has to go out at the end of each game. So, you know, in the past, you buy a ticket, and some just hang out in there for all day for, all day for yeah. the yes. price of one. Yes. Not going to do that now. So they're going to clean everybody out. So we'll see. It'll be something different. On Saturday at Lucas Oil, it will be at 11 o'clock in the morning, Saturday, uh, Class A, South Adams, 13 and 0, versus Covenant Christian, 14 and 0. Covenant Christian is a private school. Quite a few private schools on there. Yes, there are, but my point is Covenant Christian has knocked off some big teams this, uh, this Jennings season. County, Rushville, go down the line. They've got a few on the list. So. Right, and this is a 1A team. Uh, can you explain what? <laughs> Our staff's really good kids. Uh, are they? <laughs> I hate to bring up the recruiting problem, but uh, is, it, I can't is that in existence? I have no knowledge of any recruiting <laughs> okay. that's taken place. I just thought I'd mention it. I mean, I didn't know if they... Somebody brought that up today, that there were quite a few private schools. Yes. So I actually Googled it today, and I could find 24 private schools or charter schools in the state of Indiana that have football, and five of them are in the state final. <laughs> and I think years ago we said that would be the situation. Mm -hmm. So and It could be just coincidence. Look for that to be the situation. Seven out other of the, sports when it went to class. Seven out of 299 public schools are there. Yeah, so do the math, the percentages. <laughs> My nephew and niece will go to Ron Colley, and, uh, so they're all fired up and excited. So. I'll bet. Okay, and the uh, Class 3A on Saturday, Indianapolis Chitar 12 and 0, oh, another private school, uh, versus Danville 11 and 0, oh, and at 7 o'clock, <laughs> Class 5A on Saturday night, Zionsville 7 and 5 against Indianapolis Cathedral 12 and 1. We have some teams in this tournament that have won, lost several ball games. I mean, well, I think you look at Zionsville. I mean, they play a pretty solid schedule. So seven and five for them is they might be five losses by twenty points. I haven't looked, but mm -hmm. I know they beat a pretty good Valpo team last week that hadn't lost. Them. Yes, so, yes. Uh, they must be pretty solid. And I saw the Ron Colley's offensive line and uh, the middle guy six five two sixty, and the biggest guy's about six ten something. So. <laughs> It'd be nice to have an offensive line where four or five guys are six five and two sixty plus. So, you know, they got thirteen hundred or thousand and thirty one kids, so they're not really much bigger than we are. Mm -hmm. So about the same size school. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of them kids will be playing on Saturdays. Next There'll year. be a few mm -hmm. places in all those twelve teams coming mm -hmm. in. We'll have kids. You know, the kid that was at Pioneer Single A School starts for Notre Dame. Six foot two running back. So, I don't know where he plays running back there, but he's at Notre Dame and he's playing. Uh, I know where some of these teams are, but some of them I've never heard of. Uh, do you have, like, there's a team at Thorn, one of them's at Thorntown, where's that? In that Western Boone? Yes. Yeah, it's just on the west side of Indianapolis, northwest side. Pretty close to, uh, there's the Thorntown exit as you get close to Indiana Beach as you're headed up on that side of the road. So, Hobart's up north. What else you want to know? South, South Adams is Bluffton. South Adams right? over on the right, on, over on the bus, Bluffton, Adams County over on the east side of the state. Mm -hmm. South of Fort Wayne. Hmm. So, South Adams Starfire, if you want to go that far. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm sure it's going to be a lot of interest in the games will be available on TV, I believe. Yeah, you can get online at IHSA.org and you can follow them. They'll be stream live. They won't be live. It'll be over the webcast. So mm -hmm. I don't know that Fox might be covering them, but uh, I definitely know you can find them on the IHSATV.org site good. on the website and watch That's them. That's great. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, it's been an interesting football season, and uh, we keep hoping that the Spartans will be among the elite like that one of these days. Well, I think if we can keep people moving in the right place and get all of our kids in the high school that ought to be playing, playing. Yes, uh, yes. Not that they have to quit the sport they're in, but there are kids that aren't doing any sports in the fall that could help our football team as well as our soccer team and other teams as well. Yes. So it'd be nice to have them all out doing more than just one thing at a time. But, uh, Let's give all of our coaches a summer to see what we can do since none of them had a summer last time and knows that to have their programs established makes it easier to be successful this year than those that don't have an established program yet. So we'll give them a good summer to see what we can get done. Well, the main thing is to get the vaccine and, and get the, the world mm -hmm. moving ahead again and, and not have this holding, holding over our heads. Well, I think it's wearing people out. I think the kids are out of their normal routine. They don't. You know, they come to school Monday, then they don't have to come to school Tuesday. So those that go to school on Monday stay up late on Tuesday, and then they're tired on Wednesday. And <laughs> those that don't have to go to school on Monday stay up later on Sunday night, and then they're tired. And So they're just out of the whole routine of everything they're used to being yes. able to do over the past 12 years. So They just need to be back in the classroom somehow, some way. So. I think in time we'll get there, just trying to keep everybody safe. and. Mm -hmm. You know, it just takes the cooperation of the whole community, the whole state, to do yes. the right things consistently. You know, and not continue to expose our people to whatever they're getting exposed to. So, the Boy Spartans play three away games the next weekend. They will be at Rushville and Shelbyville before coming to Spartan Bowl and I guess having their season opener one of these days. Saturday the twelfth, I believe. So <laughs> it's right around the corner, really. When you stop to think about it, uh, we'll see that. We played okay in a scrimmage on Saturday against Hamilton Heights, which was a little bit different competition than Knightstown, and yes. had some nice kids on their team. And I think for the most part we held our own for three of the four quarters. So in the fourth quarter we lost by one point or four points. So we held our own. Probably a little better competition, like I said, than Knightstown has been yes. in the last few years. So, but you know it's all different when you don't play the same thing every quarter, and you got to switch what you're doing. So we'll see. A little trivia for you: the last time that. The Spartans did not open with, with Never? Union County. It was in 1996. Uh, we opened at Muncie Southside on the Friday before Thanksgiving, and then Thanksgiving Eve we played our normal Union County game. Howard Winter was the coach. We lost that ball game. I don't remember the score, but we did lose that ball game. I'm not sure why that was the case that we went to Muncie Southside early like that. Um, we would have been conference at that time, I think, in 96 with them in the Olympic Conference. Should have been. I was coaching. Mm -hmm. Maybe Union County had advanced in the football tournament. Well, no, that would have been a win. Uh, Maybe we been had a bad Wednesday. snowstorm early. Uh, Maybe we had know. a blackout. Maybe I, we had I a don't power know why. Outage. It was interesting, Sam. I didn't realize that. Go that. back and look at that. Mm -hmm. was look at, look at uh, past records. And Do you, you trust John Harrell with everything mm -hmm. on his website? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much when it comes to... <laughs> I'll have to go back and look. I don't remember that because I would have been there. Well, you'd have been a JV coach, wouldn't you? Yeah. I, I, that or varsity assistant. Or varsity assistant. Which. One of those two. Mm -hmm. so. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that uh, this week uh, holds up here with the Lady Spartans on uh, Tuesday night with Mount Vernon. Uh, they play on Saturday afternoon with Batesville, and the Spartans play Saturday night at yeah, Delta. We'll open up with swimmers on the December 1st, I believe. So right after we get back from break, so. Brent, so always happy to have you with us, and you brought us good news today for, uh, it was a little bit different than some of the weeks. We're moving forward, so. <laughs> That's uh, right, we're, we're, we're on we're, the plus side. As I say, we're trending in the correct direction for the week, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of the Spartan Sports Report, and happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye.